Now let's move on to complex shapes. So I'm going to delete those. And we need a series of connected lines which form a closure. This time I'm going to use just the line tool since I'm merely using lines. And I'm going to draw a series of squares. Let's do this, this, and this. OK. And I'm going to draw the squares. But obviously, I could have drawn the first square and copied it twice. But I need the practice too. So there we have three squares, which are enclosing a space. But each one, of course, is an individual line. Let's make this into a complex shape. So we start the Create Complex Shape tool. And again, we have the choice between automatic and manual. I'll leave this on automatic. Do not want to simplify the geometry. And now I have the option of adding a color as well, if I wish. Now, this is very similar to the level one course where you drew circles and blocks, which are closed shapes in their own right, and where you could add a color if you wanted to. I'll leave that off for the moment. Let's create the complex shape now. And again, it's exactly the same procedure as for the complex chain. So I'll start this process by selecting this first line. And the next data point is very important. I want MicroStation to go in this direction when creating the complex shape. So I need to data point here above this line to force MicroStation to do so. If I data pointed here, MicroStation would run in this direction around the sets of lines. So I data point here. Data point. MicroStation chooses those two lines, but I want this one and then that one. So I do a reset. MicroStation chooses that one, which is correct. Data point, that's correct. Data point again, that's correct. Data point to accept the shape. Let's see what we have. We have a complex shape as it should be. Let's just try it the other way so you can see how that works. I'm going to undo that complex shape. We're now back to individual lines. Start the tool again, select the same line, but data point here instead. Data point, that's good. Like that, data point. Don't like that, reset, that's good. Data point, shape is finished, data point to accept. And we have a complex shape. Now, please practice that, starting from different lines going in different directions. Now, let's get rid of those again and try a different method of creating a complex shape. This time, I'm going to use the Create Region tool. And this tool is a little different in that it's used mostly for patterning operations where we have areas within areas which need to be patterned. You'll see how this works when we get to the patterning videos. For the moment, all we're interested in is this option, which is the flood option. So we can use this to data point within an area, and the flood option will flood out, essentially, and find elements surrounding that space and create a complex shape. So we need to start with an enclosed area. So I'm just going to use the line tool and draw this shape. Draw along with me. Close the shape. Now these, of course, are individual lines. Off to the region tool. Everything's in place. Fill type none for the moment. We'll leave that off. And we data point inside the area. Data point. The flood method has found all of the elements surrounding the data point. We data point to accept, and we have a complex shape. I'm going to undo that. So we're back to the individual lines. And let's try some different options. Let's fill with an opaque color. Let's use red. And let's turn on Keep Originals. Now, by turning that on, when I use the tool and create the complex shape, the original lines will remain in place. And I'll have both the original lines and the complex shape in the same position. Let's try that. Same procedure. 
data point inside the shape, left click to accept, and I see color, and this will be a complex shape. Complex shape. Now, if you don't see color, of course, make sure that fill is on in view attributes. Now, what about the keep the original elements? Well, if I click and drag, this is the complex shape, but the original lines are still in place. Now, this may or may not be what you want. What it does do, of course, is allow you to keep the original elements and maybe work with them later, but it also adds size to the design file because now you have the added file size from the newly created complex shape. Under most conditions, this is not normally a problem, but if file size is important to you, then turn off keep original elements. Now, please go back and practice all of the items we've discussed in this video. And in the next video, I'm going to give you two fairly large exercises to work with to create complex shapes. And it's important that you do them because when you get to the patterning videos, you will need to be very conversant with complex shapes.